Minnesota pork producers market almost 15 million hogs annually. They're a major economic contributor to the state, generating more than $7.6 billion a year. The pork industry creates an additional 22,500 jobs in nutrition and care, construction, trucking, feeding, accounting, and consulting. Due to economic efficiencies and new technologies, Minnesota hog farms have become more specialized in recent years. Now most pork producers raise a certain age or sex of pig. This method of hog farming brings more efficiency to the operation. Animals of similar age, sex, and genetics will have similar needs for caring, feeding, and marketing. Most producers raise hogs in confinement buildings that allow a controlled environment. Feed intake, water availability, and temperatures are closely monitored. We raise our pigs in buildings to keep the environment stable. We don't want a big swing up and down, you know, with the weather changes in Minnesota. Pigs like a consistent temperature. We have curtains on the side, which is natural ventilation. We also have one fan for exhaust. We also have two big three-foot circulating fans to circulate the air when it's really hot. When it gets above 90 degrees, pigs can't sweat, so they need to have cool temperatures. Temperature in this building is between 65 and 68, and when little pigs are born, they like it about 95 degrees. Little pigs, what they do is nurse and sleep. So when they're sleeping, they like it warm. So that's why we add the heat lamps and the black pad, which absorbs heat. So it's almost like a little bed area for them to lay on. Because if a pig gets a draft or gets chilled, that's normally when you get sick animals. Pigs can contract disease, so antibiotics may be used, and a veterinarian is often consulted. Market animals are held back until all antibiotics are out of their system. Buildings are locked and biosecurity signs are posted at entrances to prohibit entry without approval. To prevent disease transfer, visitors can't have contact with another pig site in the previous 48 hours. Some locations require a shower before entering and leaving. Many pig barns have bathrooms and showers for staff and visitors. Special clothing is often required while inside. Hawk confinement barns are environmentally friendly and meet state regulations that protect our water quality. Most are designed with a concrete pit underneath the building to store manure. Some buildings have gutters with mechanical cleaning equipment. Containing manure provides safe storage until fields are available for application. The floors of confinement buildings are slatted so that manure can fall easily through the storage area while the hogs remain clean and dry. Hog barns are designed for efficiency and maximum pig comfort. Many barns hold one type or age group of pigs. Gestating barns house females that are pregnant. Barrowing barns house sows that have recently given birth. Nursery barns are used for small piglets just weaned from their mother. And finishing barns house the pigs that are raised for market. Grower or replacement barns house the quality young stock that is needed to maintain genetics and the breeding program. Barns are typically divided into pens where the pigs are raised. The animals have constant access to feed and water, have room to exercise, and can socialize with pen mates their own age. The producer can easily monitor feed and water intake and the health and welfare of the pigs. Sows are often kept in individual small pens to keep them from fighting with each other and hurting their piglets. The producer can watch them closely and care for the baby pigs. Pigs are fed a special feed ration of corn, soybean meal, and supplements, a complete balanced diet. Rations change as animals get older and require different feed. Because pigs are very susceptible to disease, antibiotics may be used and a veterinarian is often consulted. Market animals are held back until all antibiotics are out of their system. At slaughter plants, 
The USDA Food Safety Inspection Service ensures that antibiotic residues do not enter the food chain. Gestation is the period from when they are bred to right before they have babies, which is 114 days in length. On our farm, we farrow every other week, which means we have 10 to 12 sows come in every other week, and that equals up to 100 sows. The feed is basically the same as the gestation barn, except for a little bit more soybean milk for protein, because they need more energy to produce milk for the litters. Farrowing in a crate helps control the sow's ability where they lay up and down more straight so they don't crush the baby pigs. During weaning, the piglets will be sorted by male and female, then moved to nursery barns. Females and males have different nutritional needs and mature at different rates. Some farmers select replacement gilts and boars from their nursery stock, choosing animals that are genetically superior for future breeding. Artificial insemination is widely used in the swine industry. It allows hog producers to choose a variety of genetics without having a boar present for breeding. Boars are naturally aggressive, so artificial insemination is a safer alternative for people working on the farm. Due to consumer demands, swine genetics have changed in recent decades. Years ago, pigs were bred for large quantities of fat since lard was a widely used product for cooking. Today's genetics produce low-fat, high-muscle animals that offer consumers healthy and high-protein meat. After outgrowing the nursery barn, young pigs are moved to a finishing barn. They are fed a balanced diet and raised until they are market ready. A typical finishing barn in Minnesota is 50 feet wide by 150 feet long and holds about 1,200 pigs. Barns are designed for animal comfort and efficiency. Feeding and watering is done automatically. Farmers' daily routines include inspecting the feeders and waters and checking animal health. Managing a herd for feeding efficiency and health is a key to success. Pigs are typically ready for market when they reach 240 to 260 pounds. Handling and loading market hogs is done efficiently and carefully to minimize stress. Animal comfort during this process is important because stress situations can decrease meat quality. The Minnesota swine industry has taken a proactive approach to siting new farms and operating existing ones. Manure handling, storage, and field application are carefully regulated in Minnesota. Hog producers do their best to reduce the odor on their farms. New facilities meet setback requirements away from populated areas. Trees and vegetation are often planted around facilities for natural filtration. Most hog manure is in liquid form and stored in engineered pits beneath the barns. Liquid manure is applied to crop fields as fertilizer in the spring and fall. It's pumped out of the pit and transported to fields and usually injected into the soil. Injecting reduces odor and prevents the nutrients from running off in rain or snow events or evaporating from the sun. Farmers who have more than 300 animal units are required to keep manure management records. A county feedlot officer or the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency reviews these records to make sure that manure is handled, stored, and applied properly and not causing any environmental issues. Soil nutrient testing, crop nutrient needs, manure nutrient testing, and crop rotations all determine how manure is applied to fields. Technology on farm equipment allows farmers to apply only the amount of manure needed per acre to meet crop needs. Minnesota swine industry is progressive. Farmers take pride in their farms, caring for their hogs and the environment. Technology, economics, and a willingness to succeed makes pork production efficient. The hog industry is a top economic contributor in Minnesota, providing a safe, wholesome product for consumers.